Uh, Ian Donovan, tipper back by God. We haven't the best finishers. We have the best finishers in the game, no question. Would you debate that? The best finishers, um, a couple of them anyway. I think Jason, Jason Ford come on scored five points. Haven't been. Can I just say as well, Ty De Burka hit him with one of the most beautifully timed shots the other night. Ford was only on the field about a minute. And I'm thinking, Jesus, if, if Ford's out for this tonight, he could, you know, it could be, you know what I mean? You know, when you come in and you get a, a dunt like that, all of a sudden he puts over five, nearly five in a row. And I think as well, um, I can't remember if we mentioned him around the top five risk conversation, but some of the scores he got the other night were just like bang, bang. Like no, no movement hardly required, no shoulder action, just bang from distance. He was brilliant when he came on the other night. Yeah, I, I, I come to, yeah, sure. Look, we're going to talk about Tip Waterford now, 423 to 25 points. And before the match, I was sitting beside Tomas McCarthy of WLRFM and the Waterford News and Sport, and you know, having a bit of crack, doing a bit of jaw. And, and this is all in light of the fact that Waterford, Tipperary haven't beaten Waterford since was it the 2020 league, and you know, very much uh, at second or have been second best against Waterford in recent times. And I was just, we were looking at the fact that there was a big crowd, and I was like, you know, you know, obviously tip her back, and it just feels like a bit of a homecoming here. We're, all we're missing is Deline McCarthy there, but otherwise it feels like a bit of a homecoming. And then I'd lean over to him and I'd say, uh, geez, do you know what? I'd, I'd actually pay just to ta- watch Tip in the warm-up, wouldn't you? <laughs> so I was just winding him up from the get-go, but he knew I was having the crack, so we, we had good old fun with that. But um, yeah, what, what was your first thoughts on that performance on both sides? Um... Well, Waterford was a bit kind of Jekyll and Hyde at different times. Um, I was mystified. I said to you, I'm mystified as to why Desi Hutchinson is playing out the field. Um, and it, like, and not been smart. If you're going to play him out the field during the league, you'd imagine that's where he's going to be come championship time, which seems a bit bonkers considering he's one of the most dangerous inside forwards. Like, you can't tell me, and I know, um, Jack Prendergast was dangerous inside when he was in there at other times, and even Colin Dunford was in there a bit as well. You can't tell me that either of those two or anybody else that Watford have uh, is more dangerous inside than Desi Hutchinson. So I, I find that I find that very strange. Uh, the Baron Red Card obviously had a big uh, a big playing on the game. Um Tipperary got a goal, I think, within seconds after. We don't yeah. exactly know know what he did, but it seemed like seemed like Davy was was okay with the sending off any, uh, after because they know he'd uh, he'd have caught Fergal Horgan uh, a couple of weeks ago over some decision that he made in their previous game. So if he said he was okay with it, he obviously saw it or whatever. But do you know what? I loved the needle in this game the other night. There was needle from start to finish. Um, Ford came in, remember, it was just lads running into him. There was needle from start to finish. There was needle going down the tunnel at half time. Um, and you can say that the you know not to read too much into a league game or the league is meaningless, but like I just that stuff is manna from heaven for me. Like just to see to see lads getting up close and personal with each other, and you know that's going to carry on to uh, come summer as well. Even to see Davy wagging the finger at cattle and cattle kind of smile back, and then I thought maybe the smile turned to you know to a bit of crack to you know. With, we will we'll see in a few weeks or whatever. I just everything about this game, uh, maybe outside of the result, I, I loved it. Yeah, the result was top top. No, I agree with you there. <laughs> I know. Look, there was great needle. Uh, there's nothing more ludicrous than watching two players like rotting stags shoulder each other. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's great fun. I always remember one when David McInerney came on against Watford. Oh, this would have been about five or six years ago. Himself and Ozzy Gleason started shouldering each other. And I counted it back because it went on for so long. They did nine big shoulders on each other. It was absolutely ridiculous. Just getting down, shoulders warmed up. Just getting yeah. shoulders warmed up. I have uh, PWL74 saying, uh, Shane, you forgot to put up a video of Breen's kick. Lucky boy. Now, I didn't. I was at the match. I didn't see it. Full Arsene Wenger. But if someone wants, and someone said it to me on Twitter last night, if you want to send the video, go ahead. I didn't see it, but if he didn't kicked it, it, I didn't lot. see it either. Now, to be honest with you, and I'd only be loving to highlight any tip indiscretions, and I, did, I didn't notice. Now, I have to say, yeah. Do you know what? I want to bring up on screen. So there's a lot of talk about the the tactics that Watford employed in this game, and I'll give you my take on it. So I'm going to bring up a pitch map, and just for convenience' sake, I'm going to bring up a pitch map uh, that we had of Kikenny last year. So we're talking about Watford, but this is just an old Kikenny team. It's just to make it easy for the, for the puckouts. This is what I was seeing at times. So obviously the water lads would mill around in the back as you off, uh, as you always would and try to find pockets of space and tip would push up on them. But there was basically, it seemed at times, and not always, but that you'd have four players in a sort of a tight formation in the middle of the field 
I remember one time in particular, Ozzy Gleason being man marked by da, um, Dan McCormick. He was on the left wing, and Desi Hutchinson was basically at the corner flag. So I get it. They're trying to create space. So we can see here there's huge uh, raft of space here and here. And obviously, if uh, if uh, the goalkeeper Sean O'Brien does a sorry Billy Nolan in this case does a one two, he could maybe drive it over the top for the defenders to come But what was happening was it was just a lot of 50-50 ball on top of the numbers anyway. So I kind of wondered what was achieved by it. And there was a bit of a theme throughout the game of Desi Hutchinson being over at the corner flag, being in his own half, basically being anywhere except in front of the, the, the post, sorry, in front of the goals where he can do his damage. Like there was one uh, instance, do you remember when Stephen Bennett ran, ran through in the first half and he kind of got caught in two minds whether he should pass it or take the shot on, take on the defender, and he ended up getting his shot blocked down by, I'm trying to remember who was it, it was... Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure who it was. I think it might have been Brian O'Mara blocked him down. But what had happened was Desi Hutchinson, as soon as the, the break had happened from Stephen Bennett, Desi Hutchinson ran for the corner flag, which opened up the space, which is all well and good. But then when Bennett met Brian O'Mara, he had no one to pass it to. So if Desi Hutchinson had to peel away, but on the loop where he could come back and be available as, a, as an option for Bennett, he might have got himself a goal. So I just found it a little bit strange and maybe even Davy Fitz is thinking, you followed it a bit too much to the letter of the law there. Obviously, use that corner flag thing to create space. But, of course, you still have to make yourself available for the ball. Yeah, I, I have to say, I think Watford are overthinking it. Um, and I have to say, with I, I didn't I couldn't notice him the other night, the, the man behind the wire. But I, I all think this is feeding into, and some of the tactics are feeding into, like, actually just overthinking it. And it's there's not enough instinct in the game. Um, and they're not playing with instinct. Well, one player that is playing with instinct definitely is Caelan Lyons, anyway, who was br- brilliant again the other night. And just you know, you know, when, when you see him moving, you see him opening up the legs. It's a, it's a one, it's a wonderful sight. Now I'd love to see him. Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, opening up the legs to run. I should say. Um, I, I can see that been, I can see that been cut out into a separate clip. Um, the only thing is. Uh, does he ever? He always shoots off that right hand side, doesn't he? He never. In it, I'd like to see the teams maybe bringing him back and forcing him to go on that other side. But yeah, when he opens up, he's like he's such a weapon from centre back, isn't he? He's he's one of your biggest attacking weapons from centre back. But to me, I would have said Watford weren't getting enough out of the guys that they actually had in the forward line, and I'd be amazed if Desi Hutchinson isn't back in around the edge of the square again because I just find it mystifying with with what they're doing with him at the moment. Um. But yeah, it was a funny kind of walk for performance at different stages. Different stages, they were good. They were good to start. Really good at the start of the second half. When when Tip, I have to say, were really, really wasteful. Tip went back to the old Tip in the first 10 minutes of the second in the second half when they were just striking ball in long and it was going, it was completely aimless. They made Tyke de Borka look like an absolute hero. Then all of a sudden, for the last 15 or 20 minutes, the Borka doesn't get on the ball at all because Tip are playing the ball around like they should be playing it around. But... um. From a tip point of view, you'd have to say hugely encouraging. Uh, Jake Morris, who we haven't mentioned so far, showed the eye for goal again. Now, Waterford were very open at the back for those goal chances, like ridiculously open, you'd have to say. But he took the goals really, really well. And uh, I think it's set up for a cracker when they meet again. Have you seen a more pointed comment than the one that's just up on screen from N. Cren? What will kill Clare's chances is outlandish. Ooh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty cutting, all right. And we we cut, but that's pretty cutting. Yeah, uh, Adrian McGrath. He's coming for us again regarding Tipperary. Any concerns about the period after half time when they looked totally out of ideas before James Owens handed the game to them, blatant free out for the push by Morris and the red. Yeah, there was there was, there was definitely a hint for push there. I, I'd hold. I definitely agree with that point. But throughout the game, as I said, I was beside Tomas McCarthy, uh, the journalist from Watford, and I kept saying. I see only one side has been refereed here. No tip free again. Oh, Watford had allowed 10 steps again. I was actually where, at a stage where he couldn't even argue with me. Uh, maybe <laughs> Tomas will come in with a comment to try and put me straight. But I felt Tipperary weren't getting a whole pile. But, you know, maybe there's a point. Uh, Adrian McGrath has a bit of a point there. But the red card, it seems to, you know, across the board seems to be accepted that it was fair enough. But I, I was disappointed to see a red card because we had a nice game. There's only three points in it. Uh, so it kind of ruined the game, really. It was it? kind of hard to predict what was going to happen at that point, uh, to be honest with you, because Waterford were after get, making their way uh, back into the game and make, after making their way back in really, really well. One thing that Davey's going to have to do is he's going to have to get Stephen Bennett firing from play again. 
because he just hasn't looked like the player of a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know. No score from playing the league. Yeah, I don't know. Did he score from play in last year's Munster Championship as well? I know Craig Morgan was on him the first day. Don't think he scored. I don't know. I'm not. I could, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I, I don't remember him scoring much from play if he did. And they need to get him humming again. Plus, like you, you might um, go through it a bit more. Like, they have a fair whack of injuries coming into Munster now. Like it's quite close. What are we at now? We're at the 13th of March. We're looking at... 20, five weeks 20, away? Yeah, five weeks is not much time. And a lot of them are big players as well that Dave is going to be sweating over. Yeah, so like Austin Gleeson, he came off. Hopefully that's just a precaution. Connor Prunty came off. Michael Kiley's injured. Dara Lyons. Connor Gleeson. Sean Walsh. Shane McNulty. I mean, it's a fair list. And even before the game. So a lot of people there were frustrated with the amount of changes to the match programme. Those people changed within the 26. So PJ Fanning, Paddy Levy and Keen Wadding, they all came in. So there was changes in terms of numbers. Then the amount of players that were in different positions than that they were originally uh, posted. So I do think it, it needs to get to a stage now where it's either you put squad numbers in here and that's it. Or any time, any change that's made to a match program basically means you lose the substitution in the game. You know, because this nonsense can continue. Like... It's a card for supporters at this stage to be buying a match program if that's going to happen. Yeah, I've no issue with um, guys that are named playing somewhere else. Maybe that they're not, you know, two playing four or three playing six or six playing three or whatever. But when, when the 26 is changed and lads are like four or five lads are out of 26 and four or five are in and, you know, it's very confusing for spectators as well. If you haven't brought a pen with you, like you don't know who, you're not 100% sure who these, you know, new players are coming in. Um, so as you say, it's uh, yeah. Anytime you say cod, uh, just yeah. Anytime you say cod, I just think of Eamon Dunphy. He's a cod, Bill. But uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully they're gonna have to, something's gonna have to happen. It's getting worse and worse in recent years. Um, Sean O'Sullivan says one positive was the Waterford crowd. We were at least a match in numbers for Tip, if not beating them. Desi reacted to his own players a few times when the ball wasn't been switched to his wig. Uh, Ford looked very sharp even in the warm up. Uh, as I said, you'd pay to watch that warm up. <laughs> Jason Ford was brilliant when he came in. Like they needed, uh, they needed somebody to come in and make a bit of an impact there, just to add a bit of life to it. And he definitely did. Seamus Callan going off is obviously a worry. Um, yeah, he just didn't look, didn't look happy. Um, I would, like, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be fearing the worst, worst, but I'd say that it looked like there was maybe a bit of cartilage damage. I remember having a bit of cartilage damage in my knee, that was a big problem. You're kind of moving it around like that. So I'd say it might be something like that. But again, the proximity to the Munster Championship would be worrying uh, in that regard with Barrett, uh, Cadell, Niall O'Mara, and obviously Jared Brown is out for the year as well, and Craig Morgan and Barry Heffernan. So you don't, like, you don't want to be adding to that list. You don't want to have five or six out coming into Munster because you can guarantee you're going to have another five or six out by the time you get through Munster, just given how attritional it's going to be. Yeah, Cassius King says, or a fine, or hit them where it hurts. You see, I think making all those changes to the program, it's not going to hurt the manager. The manager is the one you have to hurt to stop them doing it. So that's where you get rid of their substitutions, and that would annoy them. So I think that they'd stop on that account. Uh, Adrian McGrath again, tips only scores in that period came from a ball, let it up to the forwards, and the Waterford man who got to the ball first and miscontrolled it. Um, to be fair to, um, to Waterford, there were some things I really liked. I thought Colin Dunford looks like a player re-energised. He scored four points from play. Jack Prendergast did some very good stuff at times. You already mentioned Caleb Lyons. Four points from play. And I thought it was clever enough to put him on Noel McGrath because Noel McGrath was good and does a lot of good stuff. But I suppose keeping after a greyhound like him isn't really going to be uh, his game at all. I thought Michael Breen, he's, he, he was in fullback. Oh, well, he was in and out of fullback in different places in the backs. You know I like him in the backs, but I didn't feel it was his game. I thought at times he, he kind of struggled uh Seamus Kendi was named seven but just kind of played that withdrawn half forward role so tip had more changes than normally they would have had to the match program uh I found this interesting Watford in the first half so they had a total of 20 scoring attempts their forwards had just three scoring attempts from play now they scored two of them but I get what you're trying to do interchanging and all this kind of stuff but it just seemed like it wasn't quite coherent enough if your forwards are having just three shots from play in an entire half, that's that has to be a suggestion that you should change things a little. 
your 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 forward should be having three shots from play in the first five minutes, let alone across across the whole half. Again, I just think there's there's I'm all about thinking about the game and tinkering things. I just think there's too much thought been put into this and I think they're you know I just think there's too much top put into it and a lot of I think a couple of players in particular don't look particularly comfortable out there. Um so this is gonna be it'll be interesting to see if they can turn it around. Uh be interesting to see if they can turn it around. But they're gonna be missing Barron the next day for the Kilkenny match. I think Davy probably be happy enough not to get to the league semi finals. I think Kilkenny need uh need a draw or better to get through to the league semi league semi finals whereas Watford really with that sort of a casualty list, probably the last thing they need is to be in a semi-final and they need to just go off and do their own thing for a couple of weeks and get ready for the Munster Championship. Yeah, a lot of red cards for Watford so far this year, which, uh, you know, they, that's something they definitely need to address. Davey was talking about the in, uh, injuries after a match. He said hamstring to Pronti, hamstring to Austin. McNulty had to come off at the end. Depends on how bad they are. You're looking from three to six weeks and Pronti is a big loss. We're going to race against time with the Limerick game and Mikey Kiley would be touch and go. Dar Lines probably won't be back, but no excuses be ready to go in April. By the way, I thought Tyke Borka first half bypassed him excellent in the second half. 